Okay, this is the first video for DC circuits. Kirchhoff's first law, Kirchhoff's. Um, the algebraic sum of all currents at junction must equal zero, uh, or the sum of the currents entering a junction in an electric circuit is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction. This part here is your definition. Okay, so that's how you define it. Algebraic sum. Pretty important it includes uh, you know pluses and minuses. Here's an example. Let's say I label some of these currents on this uh, on these um, wires. Okay, so we've got I one, I two, I three, and I four. This is what should be in your notes. This thing here is a junction. Okay, it's just where the wires meet. Now all the currents going in, which is um, I1, uh, I3, must add together. So I1 plus I3. Those will be equal to everything leaving, which is going to be I2 and I4. Okay, and then you could actually rearrange that here, like you have I1 plus I3 minus I4 is equal to I2, and so on. That could be quite annoying, so let's move the other way. Let's say, for example, on this other one here, I put in a current of 1 amp, 2 amps, uh, and then maybe have 0 0.5 amps. 0 0.5 amps. Then you've got to ask yourself, what's that last one there? Well, if there's 3 amps going in, so far we've got 1 amp going out, so there must be uh, 2 amps on that one leaving. Why is this the case? It's all to do with conservation of charge. Okay, uh, you don't, it's sort of like a, um, a road, and you have little cars traveling along the road. Okay. Even if they slow down at some spots, okay, so there's a little bit of a traffic jam there, you don't lose the actual charges. They don't just drive off and crash down a cliff, okay? They stay on the road and you don't lose them. Okay, Mr. Kutchoff's second law. In any closed loop in an electric circuit, the algebraic sum of the EMFs in the loop is equal to the algebraic sum of the potential differences in the loop. Or sum of all EMS equals sum of all potential differences around a circuit loop. So, so let's have a look. Uh, what I'll do is I'll draw a quick little circuit. Cell. Let's draw another one. Going around. Let's have two resistors. Now this, this law you've seen a lot before. It's like the current law. If you think about it, you've seen it a lot. Um, if this was 1 volt, that was 1 volt, what's the total EMF? It's equal to 2 volts. Now if I had 1 volt on that, across that resistor, okay, from each side, then I must have 1 volt across that resistor. So total potential difference is equal to 2 volts. We're ignoring internal resistance in that case. It's just inherently obvious, okay, you add all your EMFs, and you then add all your potential differences and they must equal. So here we've got a circuit here and let's have a look at the loops. Okay, and we're going to use the second law to um, create an equation. So A, B, E, F, A. So A, B, E, F, A. Okay, so it's that top box. Okay, what's the EMS? Well, there's only one EMF in this case, and that's this one here, E1. Okay, so E1. That must be equal to all the potential difference around this loop. Okay, so around this loop here, looking for the potential differences. There's one on resistor R3, and there's one on resistor R1. What's the current through R3? Is I3, so I times R is equal to V. Okay, your voltage. So I... 3R3 is going to be equal to the potential difference across that one. And the potential difference across R1 is going to be 
I1. That goes back and it's uh, I1, R1. Okay, that's your first equation. How about for loop A, B, C, A, C, D, F, A? Okay, let's just get rid of some of this. Now, so it's A, C, D, F, A. So that's around the hold outside. So how many EMS? Well, there's actually two. There's this one, and there's that one. And they're actually opposing each other, okay? This one's trying to push this way. This one's trying to push this way. They're actually opposing. So I'm going to write E1 minus E2. That will be equal to the total potential differences. There's R1 and R2 in this case. It's R2. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make the current in respect to E1 positive. So I1 will be positive, I2 is going to be negative because it's opposing E1. So let's do R1 I1 minus R2 I2 because it's opposing it. And you could do another loop, okay? There's also another loop here in the middle, okay? Um, and you can then say that E2 is going to be equal to R3 I3 plus R2 I2. Then you actually have three equations and you can use um, simultaneous equation principles to actually answer the question.